So a maniac named Joseph Rosenbaum tries to attack Kyle. Kyle runs from him like anybody would. But he can't outrun Rosenbaum. He's dragging around a rifle, so Rosenbaum catches up to him. Kyle turns around and shoots him. There's some details in that, but that's the main gist of what happened. And so old Rosenbaum laying on the ground, bleeding out. And what does Kyle do? He picks up his phone and he calls his friend Dominic. Now, that's perfectly understandable. In high-stress situations like that where you think you might have gotten yourself into some trouble, right or wrong, you tend to call people that you know. You call your friends. It happens. Yes, I realize he should have called 911 instead. So what does he do at that point? Well, he starts to run. He starts to run away from the crowd that wants to beat his brains in. And so he's going towards the police, and people attack him from behind. And he trips and falls, and we all know what happens. And so he takes his rifle, and he shoots a couple of them. Yeah, I know there's some details in there. Let's not worry about that. And then he gets himself dusted off. He walks over to the police. Now, what happens next? He walks up to one of the windows of the police, and it looks like he's saying something to somebody in there. Maybe he's telling them what happened. Now, what should he have done? Did he do anything wrong here? Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Those who criticize Kyle for not turning himself in that night, although I think he tried to, for not telling the police what he did that night, although I think he probably tried, is a fundamental important concept that every human being has to learn. And some never do. And some learn the hard way. Are you ready for this? Don't talk to the cops. If Kyle had called 911, he should have told them, there's a man has been shot. He's laying on the ground. You need to send somebody over here. When he went to the police, he could have told them, there's a man laying down in the middle of the street there. He's in seriously bad shape there. You need to get somebody over there to help him. What he should not tell them is, I shot them. Don't talk to the cops. Don't tell them anything. Get the hell out of there. You can always turn yourself in later. But you need to call your lawyer. You go home. You call your lawyer. You say, hey, I shot somebody, and I think I'm in a little bit of trouble. What do I do? And the lawyer can then examine the evidence that is in front of him and say, under these circumstances, here's what will happen if you make such and such a claim, or however they do it. But as soon as you tell the police that you shot somebody, you have already incriminated yourself to a certain degree in something. Now you think, well, what difference would it make? We all know that he shot Rosenbaum, for example. Well, here's how it makes an effect. Suppose he shot Rosenbaum and the bullet went right through Rosenbaum. Bullet's not recovered. There was another gunshot that went off that night. How do you know that it wasn't that gun that killed Rosenbaum? How do you know it wasn't from some other source? So telling the police what you did can very well put you in real serious trouble. If the police want to do an investigation and find out that the bullet came from your gun, let them do it. Don't volunteer that. For example, suppose the bullet did come from some other gun and you went and told the police that you shot him you're not really guilty of what happened, but you're going to go to jail for it anyway. Unless it's a valid self-defense claim, which Kyle has, but whatever the case, at the moment, that's not clear. And the same thing goes with those other two. 
Yeah, he shot Huber in the chest. But suppose somebody else had shot him too. You just don't know. I mean, you have to be very careful about these things. The safest thing to do is keep your mouth shut. So to criticize Kyle because he didn't turn himself in or he fled the state is untoward. That's the appropriate thing to do. Unlike what a lot of people think, you're not obligated to stay at the scene of a crime. In Kyle's mind, he hasn't committed a crime. He acted in self-defense, so why should he stay there? I realize a lot of people think that, well, if I tell the cops what happened, um, they'll understand. No, they won't. Nothing you say to a cop is going to help you. It can only hurt you. What does the Miranda warning say? It's not a Miranda right, by the way. It's a Miranda warning. Everything you say can and will be used against you. Not for you, against you. And it will. They're telling you. So why are you talking to them? About the only thing you should say if you really did fire in self-defense is, I was in fear of my life. I want to talk to my lawyer. And that's it. You can spill your guts later. Consider this a nice public service announcement from Johnny Walker Dredd. And by the way, I didn't get this myself. I watched a video from a person who's a real expert in this and a police officer with like 30 years of interrogation experience. They both, they put on a presentation. I'll link it below. This is what they say. You should watch that. You should get your kids together and watch it as a family. A person breaks into your room at night. You turn around, you blast him. I was in fear of my life. I want to talk to my lawyer. You don't say nothing else. So should we criticize Kyle for not turning himself in? No, absolutely not. He did exactly what he probably should have done, although I really think he probably tried to, and I really do think that he probably tried to talk about it too. But luckily for him, I don't think that the police officer was listening. Like my video and subscribe to my channel.